normal fly day. We had training flights uh, earlier that day and we were already complete with the flight schedule roughly around noon on September 11th. In the early evening, I got the call, will the uh, air boss please report to combat? So on the ship, whenever you get reported to combat, uh, usually there's something going on. Once I found out that there was a search and rescue in progress, I went and notified my, my team. It was about the end of the day. We were getting ready to uh, relax and watch some football. Uh, we got the call over the 1MC on the ship that there was a man overboard. Initially, when we first launched, uh, everybody was very excited. We wanted to go out and try to help, try to find this person. Uh, you've got uh, a person with no flotation, uh, no signaling device, no reflective uh, items uh, to help us find them. We talked to the crew and we said, hey, it's really dark out here. We can't see very far even though we're on night vision goggles. Uh, we're gonna need to use the radar to find them. Our radar is specifically made to find small objects in the water. The newer radars, they, they offer that feature, so it makes sense to use it. I mean, it's projected to give you su um, submarines periscopes, so it, they're a lot better at picking up smaller contacts like a body or life ring, raft, something like that. So. There's different modes we could use to do that. So we said, hey, let's uh, bring up that mode, see if we can spot some objects in the water, and then we'll adjust the settings from there to see uh, if we can get maybe like 10 or 12 objects at a time. We had picked up a lot of different items or different contacts uh, off the radar. Pastor Crawford announced, hey, we've got a small contact over here. Um, he let me know which one it was. Uh, I slewed the FLIR to that radar contact. Um, and initially I didn't see anything. Looked out uh, and adjusted the FLIR a little bit, looking a little bit left, a little bit right. And then I saw something on the surface of the water. Uh it was just something like a round object floating in the water. We thought it was a buoy, we thought it was like an empty milk jug or water jug. And uh, once we started investigating a little more, we saw like, like rings around them, like something just like bobbing in the water. And then uh, at that time, I guess we were close enough to where he heard us or saw us and he, he raised his hands out of the water and that's when we knew that that was our survivor. That kind of cued me in my mind, you know, okay, this is real, this is, this is really gonna happen. So mentally, you know, all my training just came to me. I got on the hoist, got connected. Uh, he lowered me down. As soon as I entered the water, uh, he started swimming towards me, or at least tried to swim towards me, struggled. Uh, he was very tired. His first words were, you know, I fell off a boat. I was like, you know, no kidding. It felt great to know that we were gonna be able to save this guy's life. We didn't really, except what, what had happened until it was already over. We were sitting on deck and we were like, whoa, that, that just happened. This is the first successful rescue that I've had, uh, probably between five and, and 10 searches, but this is the first time actually recovering someone. Uh, radar was key. Uh, it was a sensor that initially found him. Uh, without the radar, the chance of actually finding him would have been very small. Oh.